thinking about our roles as co-op leaders, it seems to me there's three things that we need to emphasize for us to be successful. The first thing is that our goals excite people. The second thing is that our strategy wows people. And the third thing is that our commitment spreads. And what we just passed out is our co-op's goals for the co-op decade. And as we discuss those goals with the board and with our staff and with members, we were most interested in having goals that were exciting to people, that were bold goals, that goals that would make a difference, goals that would have a, a bigger impact or goals that would have a bigger reach. And so when we thought about local food, if we're selling 20 or 30 percent local food, we want to be selling 70 or 80 percent local food. And if we're talking about conserving energy or recycling, that's good, but we want to be zero net energy and zero waste. We want those goals to excite people. We want them to be meaningful goals. We want to demonstrate that we're the leader in sustainability, you know, that there is a co-op difference. So that's the first thing that there are goals excite. And when you have exciting goals, people usually say, yeah, but how are you going to do that? And we need to build confidence, and we need to um, be able to address people's doubts. Because one thing about co-op, although co-op attracts a lot of great people, it also attracts a lot of doubters. I'm sure that you've experienced that, that you've, you've had a great idea, but someone says, ah, I don't know. I don't think we should try that. So how are we going to overcome that doubt? How are we going to instill confidence? We need to have a strategy such that when we explain to people how we're going to do it, they say, wow, I hadn't thought about that, or wow, that makes sense, or wow, that's a great thing for the co-op to be doing. You know, so, so when we're telling stories about local food, for example, so how are you going to sell <coughs> 70 or 80 percent local food? You know, now in North Carolina, we're very fortunate to have locally grown flour, for example. But within the next eight years, we're going to have locally grown, locally ground flour. So that's a, that's a big deal. It is. So that when we, ha when we make our own bread, it's sort of the full process. So when we think about berries, for example, where we have great berries for a couple months a year, that we're going to freeze those berries and be able to sell them for 12 months of the year. Or when you think about salad greens that all come from California or Arizona, you know, how are we going to have our own triple washed salad greens? We're going to do it. The machine exists at Virginia Tech. We have a facility. We're just going to start, we're just going to start doing that. And that's how we're going to do it. So we need to have those kind of sort of concrete examples for people to know what we're talking about. So our goals excite, our strategy wows. And the third thing is that our participation spreads. And I think that starts with commitment. And I, I'm just going to read a little thing which I think is the magic of commitment. The moment one commits, then providence moves to. All sorts of things occur that would not otherwise have occurred. A whole stream of decisions issues from the decision raising in one's favor all manner of unforeseen incidents in meetings and material existence, which no one could have dreamed would have come their way. This happens, I've seen it so many times, is that we all are faced with moments of doubt as leaders. Are we going to take this step? We don't, we think we have an exciting goal. We believe in our strategy. But are we really going to be the one that's going to go out on the line and say, we're going to do that? We're going to go public with this and we're say, we're going to do it. We're going to be zero energy and zero waste in eight years. That's a scary moment. But when you commit to it, things come into place. You're talking to people and they give you information that you would have never, you would have never had that decision 
because you wouldn't have made that commitment or someone's excited about what you're doing. You know, I think in here we have a lot of environmentalists that don't necessarily believe that the co-op is the solution. Sometimes they're critical of the co-op. We want those people, we want those people to look through the co-op to see that it's the answer to those issues. And once you take that commitment, you attract people like that. So those, I think, are the three, thi three key things. Our goals, excite is the first one. Our strategy wows. Our wows meaning it gives us confidence, it gives the people we're talking to confidence, and it overcomes doubt. And the third one is that our participation spreads because as leaders, we've taken that step, we've taken that bold step, and the magic that comes along with that works, works in our favor.